books were taken from the monasteries and burned, erasing the past. It was a direct road between Beijing and Lhasa. In 1956, the Dalai Lama went to India, invited by Nehru to celebrate the birthday of Buddha. The Buddha experienced his awakening under this tree. It was a return to the roots of Buddhism. The Panchen Lama also made the voyage. It was a return to Buddhist roots, but also a diplomatic voyage for the Dalai Lama who asked for help against the Chinese invasion and was refused. While they were visiting the main Buddhist sites in India, far away in Tibet, the revolt had already begun in the provinces where Chinese oppression was heaviest. The voyage was about to end for the Dalai Lama and the Panchen Lama. How could they know their paths were about to separate forever? This was the Chinese method. It began in school and continued on in the camps. The huge parcels of land belonging to the monasteries were grouped together and redistributed. Growing techniques were changed and then the temples and monasteries were destroyed. Religious practices were made illegal. Arrests and purges became increasingly frequent. Traditional agriculture was ruined and the first famines began. Over three years, rioting against oppression had increased in the central provinces. The resistance was becoming organized. The large remaining monasteries were the last oases against colonization. The Dalai Lama was 22 years old. He took his last exams before being awarded his full religious attribution. He developed the same gesture with his hands to emphasize questions and answers. From monastery to monastery. Dalai Lama means ocean of wisdom.
The last illusion that Tibet could live freely with its culture and beliefs was shattered. With attacks and ambushes, the revolt continued. The resistance had spread all the way to Lhasa. The Chinese army struck back, but the Dalai Lama condemned violence of any kind in his messages. He was warned it was time to leave. During the night of March 17th, he put on a Chinese uniform and with almost no escorts, he left the palace. Destination unknown. The inhabitants of Lhasa rose up, 20,000 civilians against 40,000 Chinese soldiers. The rioting lasted three days. It was put down violently and rapidly. Freedom was gone. The resistance had ended. Propaganda footage was shot to discredit the monks. There were thousands of deaths, more than 10,000 in Lhasa and at least 100,000 throughout the country. Everything was destroyed. The Dalai Lama was hiding in the mountain. The Chinese were looking for him, saying he had been kidnapped by counter-revolutionaries. The hiding out lasted three weeks. By the end of March, he was in India. The Tibetan government was no more. Lhasa was under siege and silent. Welcomed by Nehru, the Dalai Lama began life in exile. He has lived in exile ever since. The Dalai Lama desperately tried to tell the whole world about the genocide and repression taking place in Tibet. The Panchen Lama was still a hostage and the official Tibetan leader named by the Chinese. He renounced collaborating with the Chinese several times and five years later offered his public support to the Dalai Lama. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison and then house arrest in Beijing. Tibet was completely annexed. The Chinese army continued south to straighten out its borders with India, which was now directly threatened. The future of the world was being played out elsewhere, in Berlin and in Cuba. 